Welcome, everyone. Uh, I'm Ilva Tare, uh, non-resident senior fellow at the Atlantic Council's Europe Center, and this is Balkans Debrief. After a decade of attempts to reach an agreement between Kosovo and Serbia, the EU and the US appear to have joined forces to find a solution for a long-lasting and sustainable deal for the future of the both countries. Whilst the latest diplomatic efforts have yet to show any results, a document produced by 13 policy experts and civil society activists from Serbia and Kosovo lay out four likely scenarios for Kosovo and Serbia by 2027. To unpack these uh, four scenarios and uh, to talk about the future of relations between uh, Kosovo and Serbia, we invited two people associated with this effort. Agon Malici is a political analyst and the co-founder of Spunker, um, an Albanian language uh, current affairs and uh, ideas blog, giving voice to younger generation of scholars and activists from the Western Balkans. And Milica Andrić Rakic is the manager of a new social initiative Initiative, a Mitrovica-based civil society organization in the north of Kosovo. Welcome to both of you. Thank you for having us. Milica, can you quickly walk us through the four scenarios to uh, orient our viewers? Yes, so um, as you right rightly said, 13 policy experts from Serbia and from Kosovo worked on the development of the paper. Uh, we were also both Serbs from Serbia, Kosovo Serbs and uh, Kosovo Albanians uh, involved with the process. And we've uh, came to four scenarios. Of course, there are more, but four that we deemed are the uh, most uh, probable uh, to happen in in uh, given circumstances. They all foresee a, a, a list of key assumptions that have to happen in order for those scenarios to take place. So the first scenario and uh, the one that doesn't involve any kind of violence and is best case scenario in terms of that, that it doesn't involve violence, is uh, a violence uh, is a scenario that includes peace without recognition. Uh, the second uh, scenario is scenario which foresees pretty much the continuation of situation that we have now we call it seesawing stalemate. Uh, the third scenario is uh, the most violent one, uh, the one that includes Kosovo Serbs leaving institu institutions, Kosovo institutions in, in northern Kosovo, uh, a violence that erupts from Kosovo government attempts to stop this process. Uh, and then the fourth scenario, which pretty much comes after a violent uh, conflict in the north, which um, uh, some, which includes a peace deal, a very quick and imposed peace deal that could, among other things, uh, involve uh, border adjustment uh, and uh, uh, full recognition of Kosovo by Serbia. So this, the, the fourth scenario is the only one in which full recognition uh, of uh, Serbia by Kosovo happens, pardon, of Kosovo by Serbia happens. Uh, while in the first scenario, as I said, the, the one that doesn't involve much of uh, violence or any unpredictable events uh, does not include uh, full recognition, but does include or does uh, uh, suppose that there uh, there is a recognition by uh, five EU uh, non-recognizers and that in that effect, it opens up the uh, perspective, EU perspective for Kosovo, at least. Agon, the first scenario, the de facto uh, uh, recognition, seems to be similar with the trial balloon that the West seems to have tested after the recent visit uh, to the region uh, of the high-ranking advisors to President Macron and Chancellor Scholz. Could Prime Minister Albin Kurti accept such a solution, given that he has stocked so much on full recognition? Uh, well, let me just first point out that uh, uh, this was an analytical exercise and not a normative one. You know, obviously, from Kosovo's perspective, uh, full mutual recognition and, you know, uh, accompanied with the, dealing with the past and all of these things should ideally be part of the package. Uh, but we wrote, we worked on this and I was just a contributor and this new social initiative is sort of the author of the report. I was one of the uh, persons uh, in the team who uh, analyzed the, the, the context, the assumptions. And when we were working this back in March and April, so this was way uh, uh, back. Uh, uh, and since then, we, I, at least I feel that uh, some of these scenarios are, are materializing. And uh, yes, the 
rumored uh, proposal uh, ha- is comes close to to the kind of things that we are suggesting. In that, um, uh, and I'll get back to your question on Prime Minister Kurti. Uh, in that, it addresses some of the key concerns that b- both sides have in the current process. Uh, for Kosovo, uh, unlocking uh, its international position, sort of uh, 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 coming to a situation where uh, Serbia no longer contests Kosovo internationally, allowing Kosovo to become member of Council of Europe, enter a path to NATO, uh, uh, with UN being a little bit questionable because of Russia. That's a separate discussion between Russia and the West, in a way, and we, we're still uncertain how Russia would even uh, react, even in the case of full recognition. And it will also it achieve something else for Kosovo in that um, uh, lacking direct sort of formal uh, uh, recognition, Serbia does not stand to demand much for Kosovo in terms of a compromise uh, internally, um, because you know. And and in, in our in that scenario, uh, Kosovo's the association for Serbian municipalities is foreseen to be created uh, in line with a decision by the Constitutional Court of Kosovo, so fully uh, within uh, Kosovo's. Uh, current institutional framework. So there are, I think there are things in this approach uh, that give Kosovo a lot to work with. Uh, uh, they're definitely not ideal. Uh, for Prime Minister Kurti, uh, one of the most sensitive issues for him has been the association. Uh, he has uh, built his political uh, uh, sort of narrative over the past couple of years uh, as an opponent of the association. Uh, and I think that if this uh, can be done in a way that sort of uh, eliminates all the worrisome components of it, like the uh, uh, third layer of governance, executive powers, uh, and unlocks Kosovo internationally, provides some sort of security guarantee, I think this is something interesting for him to look into. And I will end here. I think the biggest problem with this proposal and this approach is whether the Western allies of Kosovo can guarantee the recognition of the five non-recognizers in Europe. And this is, I think, where, where the biggest challenge is. I have a specific question for that later on. But I want to ask Milica now. Uh, do you think that Serbian President Aleksandar Vucic would agree to de facto relinquish all claims that Kosovo is Serbia? Uh, yeah, that that has been happening slowly for the past uh, decade. This, isn't, this wouldn't be a new... Um, a new approach in how Serbia handles dialogue. So I don't think that that would be uh, a difficult task uh, before him. Obviously, there would have to be some um, uh, uh, some uh, work with the political opposition, but again, not just in Serbia, in Kosovo as well. Uh, one of the key assumptions here is that there is a bipartisan or let's say uh, multi-partisan support uh, to this idea, especially in Kosovo where, where, where Albin Kurti is recognized as more, more vulner- vulnerable to a deal uh, with Serbia. So uh, it is not impossible. Uh, however, we did say that Part of that deal should also be should also include some additional um, um, uh, uh, guarantees for uh, the cultural heritage uh, and religious sites, uh, which is uh, one of the parties. The Serbian Orthodox Church, in this concrete uh, example, is one of the parties that needs to be. Uh, very happy with the agreement in order not to make uh, too much of a, a fuss about it. So this this is this might be the most challenging actor to persuade uh, for for this deal in the scenario one. And Milica, what do Serbs in Kosovo uh, need the association of municipalities uh, uh, to contain? Well, for uh, for a long period, they've been saying that the red line for them is education and healthcare. These are two sectors that are not integrated, and that the um, the integration of has ha- hasn't been discussed. Uh, so, uh, a level of competencies in those two two areas would be uh, crucial. Uh, on top of that, there are other. Um, things hinted at in the 2013 and 2015 um, agreements like cultural cooperation uh, and, um, for example, urban planning, joint urban planning. But I think that, as I said, the red lines for the Kosovo Serb community are uh, the healthcare system and education system. However, I do have to say that the integration process in itself is not something that the Serbian community, Kosovo Serb community, embraced. This was not a democratic process. It was imposed on the community. 
and it will have to continue <laughs> be treated in such a way. However, the imposition cannot come from Pristina government, or rather it can, but it will create conflicts and, and uh, issues on the ground. If it comes, if this push for integration comes from Belgrade, as it has again for the past decade, then we can expect a more controlled and uh, at least not dangerous situation, tense, but not dangerous. If pushes come from Pristina government, then it might again become dangerous. Agon, do you see any will from uh, Kosovo's government to make these changes on the association or that's a taboo question, issue? It's a considerable taboo, uh, although I have to say we have not seen, um, you know, we've seen the rhetoric over it uh, weaken, sort of the uh, objections to it. We've seen Prime Minister Kurti uh, speak about the association as, you know, uh, you know, kind of in the abstract, uh, suggesting that, you know, we can talk about associations that are not, not ethnically based and things like that. So I think I think there is a considerable degree of of softening uh, uh, on that front. I do think Prime Minister Kurti though, has a lot of space uh, to shape public opinion about uh, the association uh, uh, in the sense that he has enormous amount of trust among his supporters. And there is also uh, one thing that I think is going in his favor of, uh, of being able to do that, and that is the fact that the opposition in Kosovo has pledged that it will not contest the Prime Minister on the dialogue, so it, it, it is willing to work with him and not use the dialogue as something to undermine him politically. So I do think he has a lot of uh, uh, space um, uh, to reframe uh, uh, the issue of association uh, as something that has to do with uh, not undermining Kosovo, but you know, just uh, 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 addressing some of the remaining elements of integrating Kosovo Serbs. Uh, uh, and I ho certainly hope that he can he can he can try and do so in the upcoming weeks and months. And I hope you agree with me that the scenario three, the uncharted waters, uh, was in some way the most scariest one <laughs> uh, of the four that you, you guys uh, have uh, written down. How likely do you think this scenario may happen, Milica? Uh, so uh, not as likely as scenario A and scenario B, but again, not unlikely to that matter that we wouldn't exclude, the, uh, exclude it from this uh, selection. In July, I think we kind of came to step one, two, and three uh, uh, of the main elements of scenario, this scenario that we envisaged. So we were at the brink of uh, closing the borders and pretty much stopping the freedom of movement and even maybe uh, starting uh, an armed conflict. This was extremely dangerous situation. Uh, I really hope it doesn't uh, repeat on the 1st of November or end of, of, of October when this deadline for re-registration uh, expires. But uh, I haven't uh, felt that unsafe uh, since 2011 when we did have an armed conflict and when a Kosovo policeman was uh, killed in Zubin Potok. Uh, so it's... Um, uh, it, it was way closer uh, this summer than it is, I feel now, because as you said, uh, and I have to uh, maybe kind of repeat that, uh, also one of our main assumption or what we've seen is a causal relationship is the bigger international uh, engagement, the less problems on the ground. Uh, as you said, we've seen an increased international engagement after the events of 31st of July. We still haven't seen the fruits of, those enga of that engagement, uh, it's, I guess, too early, um, but I think it might, uh, it, it is, it will be enough, what we've seen so far, it will be enough to take us away from scenario three. Whether it will be enough to take us away from scenario two to one, that again remains to be seen, uh, because some sim similar increase of in international engagement and some similar words I've heard also in 2018. So window of opportunity, civil society should not be so uh, critical and should open the space. We've heard that as a civil society in Kosovo in 2018 from the international community. Uh, it seemed like they are get in a grip of the problem and then nothing happened. So the same things we are hearing now, so may I will be uh, kind of um, uh, reserved, not too optimistic that it might be enough to push everyone towards scenario A, but at least we are, I think, far from scenario C at this point. What do you think, Agon, briefly about scenario three and taunted waters? 
Um, it was a bit perhaps more likely when we were writing it back in March and April when the Russian invasion of Ukraine uh, started. It was uncertain how much of that will start to reflect in the Balkans. Um, uh, so I think that's one factor to have in mind uh, with that scenario is, uh, uh, you know, with a weak, the weaker Russia is, uh, uh, you know, and the, weaker, the, the less it's able to project its power and expose its power in the Balkans. The, the less likely that scenario is uh, uh, and the more likely that we will see leaders in Kosovo and Serbia uh, work together with Western allies and partners to, to kind of, uh, uh, you know, reach some sort of a, an, an agreement. Um, I think that is uh, one of the decisive factors in that, and that's something that remains to be seen, you know, uh, that's an evolving situation. So this trial balloon, as, as I'm calling it, of, uh, seems to promise uh, recognition by European non-recognizers, the famous uh, four, uh, five non-recognizers, if uh, the two sides agree, Serbia and Kosovo. How credible is this promise from uh, Kosovo's perspective, uh, Agon, uh, given its experience with uh, visa liberalization, for instance, and uh, a question here for you and for Milica later. Do you believe this proposal is real or is just a leaked document that wants to test waters? Uh, I think there is something real into it. I think at this point, um, uh, from what I've at least heard, is that some of the uh, uh, big allies of Kosovo cannot guarantee entirely that this will happen. But I think this is a conversation that has, has been ongoing for the past couple of years. And I know personally that uh, from my own sources that some of these countries have committed uh, uh, that they will recognize Kosovo no matter what is the nature of the normalization agreement between Kosovo and Serbia. Uh, uh, and they've made this commitment. Uh, now, whether they're, they're, all of them will see it the same way, I do think that if one or two or three break, that will create enough momentum uh, because this is a uh, European security challenge, and I think if uh, it's it's framed like that, and if uh, especially the U.S. sort of also plays a key role in this, I do think there is space to sway them. Uh, now, for Kosovo, I don't think that is not enough. I think Kosovo will not just need the recognition of these, uh, especially the four NATO members. It will need some sort of uh, a path towards NATO membership. Uh, of course, membership cannot be guaranteed, not even for Finland or Sweden. They are both facing obstacles. But at least uh, a part of the agreement should include this security dimension, uh, an, an open path to Kosovo to join NATO within a uh, reasonable time frame of a couple of years. Elisa, what was the reaction about this uh, paper uh, in Serbia? I don't think we've had uh, many of them. Uh, unfortunately, I guess for us, it does a ring quite similar to the balloon that uh, you've mentioned sub several times. And it was kind of released just a few days before our conference. I believe not many people will believe us that we kind of came first, that this, uh, uh, this, this really came as a result of our um, exercise. So there's still no, n not many reactions. In Kosovo, we had some on Twitter, um, People are m mainly upset that there uh, isn't a mutual recognition uh, in any of the scenarios. However, I have to underline that this is a five-year uh, scenario forecast. It's 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 not longer, and simply that group of people didn't believe that it's uh, m realistic to have that uh, within the next. Uh, five years. I will also just say that uh, on account of uh, uh, reaching uh, re recognition by EU non-recognizers, it is our assumption that they uh, want to align with US and the rest of the EU policy on this issue. Uh, and that they also, as Agon said, recognize it as a security issue. But yes, that is the most challenging uh, part of the of the. Um, uh, scenario. And this is why actually this scenario is one of the key assumptions includes uh, uh, a more robust role of the EU, uh, especially, uh, but uh, as well US. But for EU, it kind of more and more voices are saying that we'd, uh, we'd need them to become a part of the deal, a signatory as, as well, not just someone who oversees the signing, but is there with their signature and with their uh, concrete promises. If the EU can um, deliver that, I guess 
it remains to be seen. If it doesn't, we'll for sure go to this seesawing stalemate that we've had for, I'd say, since 2018, where um, just parts of the dialogue are renegotiated or or uh, or uh, additionally negotiated, but not really uh, solved in in any in any crucial manner. That there is no crucial uh, um, movement uh, in the towards the uh, final agreement. I have two final questions. Uh, uh, talking about uh, the West, the EU and US in this case, uh, Agon, do you think they can act as a guarantor uh, to any final deal, um, considering what we were talking now, uh, the, the fatally undermined words that they have uh, used during this last decade? I think this will be the key problem with this and the key challenge with this approach. Uh, this requires uh, 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 not just in our in the scenario that uh, we worked on, but also in the leaked uh, document, there are a lot of assumptions made on what the uh, international mediators can guarantee. Uh, for example, for Serbia, you know, uh, uh, an open EU uh, accession uh, path for Serbia, closing chapter 35. These are things that the EU has lost a lot of credibility on. Uh, for example, in the case of, of North Macedonia, and uh, I think both sides will be very, very skeptical to sign uh, things without strong guarantees, especially in Kosovo's case. Uh, Kosovo signed the Atisari package thinking this was the fine, this was uh, the end. You know, it uh, made all these concessions uh, under the assumption that the Western partners were guar would guarantee Kosovo's uh, international uh, uh, recognition. Uh, so Kosovo will be looking for very, very strong guarantees. Whether uh, we can get them, uh, either for Kosovo or for Serbia, this 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 will be the, the key credibility test. I think this is the weakest link and the weakest point uh, on this so far, uh, because uh, you know, as I said, we have the case of North Macedonia, uh, and then there are certain things that they can simply not guarantee. You know, uh, Serbia's EU path is not only dependent on fixing relations with Kosovo; it is related to uh, governance standards, its its own internal democracy. Um, uh, just like Kosovo's NATO path, you know, cannot be uh, uh, fully guaranteed because you never know. It, it can be not, maybe not, not to say not non recognized but even some of the countries that do recognize Kosovo might have issues with that. So uh, this will be, I think, the weakest uh, and the most. Uh, they, they will come. They will have to come in with something very credible and very, uh, very strong in terms of uh, commitments. Scenario four uh, envisions a return to a land swap uh, of some sort uh, in exchange for full recognition. Could either side agree to this today, Milica? Uh, no, definitely not. Uh, however, this scenario came as a kind of a necessity. Uh, in the first two sessions, we only went with three uh, scenarios, A, B and C. But then as discussions uh, went on, we saw that we kind of need to include this as well, because this would be a result of a violent eruption in the north, uh, armed uh, either rebellion or semi-rebellion, uh, however you call it. Uh, and then this type of peace agreement is imposed and is one of the options, the most uh, likely one, simply because it was kind of already felt out among the, the, the members of the international community and not everyone uh, was too opposed to it. Uh, so we ended up uh, including it. Uh, so normally it cannot happen. Uh, it, it, it implies that all of the other options are exhausted, uh, that both Kosovo and Serbia no longer um, have uh, uh, willingness to, to continue negotiating. The international community is not too keen on uh, maintaining uh, the status quo and just controlling the or, or doing the co conflict management. Uh, and basically, out of lack of all options and as, as a cause of uh, serious uh, disruption in the north, uh, this scenario is imposed. Uh, we have to, we had to keep it there for simple reason that even this summer has proved that uh, North Kosovo is not, not beyond uh, a serious conflict. Uh, so it is quite uh, possible that it might erupt. It can be, uh, we argued actually, uh, it might most likely will, will come as a result of Russian meddling, but it can also be very, very uh, organic. So this is why we kind of had to face it and, and uh, face this fact and include this in the scenario so that we can also 
kind of warn um, mm -hmm. against it because it's really quite unpredictable and, as you said, uh, scary. What do you think, Agon? Is it likely? It's unlikely, uh, increasingly unlikely. Um, it has no support, uh, very, I mean, extremely low support uh, uh, within Kosovo. Uh, uh, you know, it, it failed once. Uh, especially the international context right now in light of what's happening in Ukraine uh, makes it even more difficult. I mean, to uh, to even to start any conversation along those lines. Uh, so, uh, but as Melissa said, you know, uh, when you're doing scenario planning, you have to kind of uh, uh, assume uh, uh, all kinds of possible likely scenarios. And since it already kind of, it surprised us when it appeared in 2018, uh, uh, so it was, uh, w it was worth, I guess, from an analytical perspective, kind of, uh, uh putting it out there, um, uh, just as something that, you know, uh, to have in mind. Too many trial balloons <laughs> going on during this difficult uh, dialogue between Serbia and Kosovo. Agon and Milica, has been a pleasure to talk to you, a young generation of civil society experts uh, and activists in both countries. Thank you for giving us this interview, for sharing your views, and thank you for watching us. You can do so by following us at uh, AC Europe on Twitter, on uh, YouTube, and as a podcast.